In Batman Arkham City, Batman faces Solomon Grundy during his mission to take down Penguin. The encounter occurs in the Iceberg Launch, Penguin's base of operations within Arkham City. After defeating Penguin's thugs, Batman pursues him into an underground chamber where Penguin reveals Solomon Grundy, a massive undead brute kept alive by electricity from three generators. Grundy, controlled by Penguin, becomes the primary threat. Batman must destroy the generators to weaken Grundy. As each generator is disabled, Grundy grows weaker but more aggressive, eventually entering a berserk mode where he attacks Batman with increased ferocity. Despite the intensifying danger, Batman evades Grundy's attacks and continues to damage him. In the final phase of the fight, Grundy is severely weakened, allowing Batman to defeat him with a final series of blows. Although Grundy doesn't die in a conventional sense due to his undead nature, he is left incapacitated, and Batman continues his mission, confronting Penguin and moving forward in the story. This battle underscores the darker tone of Arkham City, with Solomon Grundy embodying the bizarre and dangerous criminals housed within the city's walls. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll be taking a closer look at the McFarlane DC Multiverse Batman and Solomon Grundy 2 pack, inspired by the Arkham City game. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps support the channel. Now, let's dive into the review and I hope you enjoy. Since the art card and the stands are no longer glued to the background, you can now use this as an additional background diorama. Solomon Grundy scales at 8 and a quarter inches or 21 centimeters. He also comes with his own art card with a short biography at the back. Not sure if he needs it, but he also comes with it all with his own uh, base or stand with the DC logo. Batman scales at seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters. He also comes with his own art card with the biography at the back and also his own stand or base with the DC logo. Aside from that, the only accessory he has is that grappling gun. I think that's one of the things that 
uh, I think my, some people might not like about this two pack considering that these are just recolor of previously released molds they did not really provide any accessories at all aside from that grappling gun okay guys this is one of McFarlane's weird idea that it's so weird that it's cool and if you like it it's for you if not then there are other choices that they provide and considering that I bought it I guess I thought that it is cool and being a huge Batman fan I kind of I'm really a I'm kind of a sucker on it I really buy most of the Batman that they release and yeah this is I guess supposed to be how they look like during the detective mode now this is this small this one of McFarlane's earlier releases so no improvement was made so I have the same issues on it as when I first uh, got this mold and that is the proportion of the figure I think his body and legs are so muscular but his legs are so tubular there's no muscle definition on it I think I have the same issues with it as their initial release of the movie Wonder Woman there's just no muscle definition on it and if you will look at it proportion wise I think the legs are too small it's like Batman went to the gym and was too lazy on leg day so he just decided to skip it anyway since this is one of McFarlane's earlier releases articulation wise uh, the only improvement that we can see through the years that McFarlane did is that on their initial releases they only have one joint elbow on their elbow and they can only the only range is only up to that so good thing McFarlane changed that and they now release they now have double jointed elbows in their figures now for the main reason why I bought this two pack this Solomon Grundy like you guys I kind of also thought that it would have been cooler if this skeleton look is more like uh, in, uh, they just made it inside you know like they gave it an inside skeleton so that you can see it through this uh, see-through orange plastic but let's face it, face it guys this is one of McFarlane's group brainstorming on how they can reissue their previous mold in order to, you know, cut the uh, regain costs on their molds, on their old molds. And if they will do that, which I, I agree would have been cool if, if the skeleton is inside, that would have been a completely new mold and they would have just released it as a single release, as a mega fig and i'm pretty sure that would cost more so this is i guess their alternative now i have no problem with this one them drawing the skeleton on the outside but my problem is that they should have at least also do it at the back so this is a perlin being lazy again putting the design on the front and nothing on the back so when I saw this for pre-order I was kind of hoping that it's gonna be a new mold for Solomon Grundy because this mold is kind of too small well unfortunately guys we still have to wait for McFarlane to do that because this is the same old mold um, but as I said guys this is one of McFarlane's group brainstorming on how they will release reissue their old molds and i agree that this is one of those weird ideas but i, I think it's cool <laughs> yeah uh I, I actually like it i like it so it may not be for everybody but i i see why mcfarlane keeps doing this because consider because they thought that maybe there's still a mark there's a market for it and when i saw this i actually looked at that 
um, is this McFarlane's version of releasing their figures for Halloween, like Halloween version? But yeah, I guess uh, I was corrected and was told that this is supposed to be how Grundy looked like during detective mode. Uh, it's been a while since I played that game, so to be honest, I don't remember it. Anyway guys, articulation-wise, nothing's changed. And um, my complaint with McFarlane's, this is actually when, when I see with McFarlane's Megafig that they only give them a single elbow joint. Same thing as their new Megafigs right now, even that vein, single, single elbow joint. I hope that's an improvement that they will, they will, they, they will do moving forward on their Megafig because they are a huge mold so why not give them double jointed elbows overall this uh two pack set can easily be a pass because as i said this is one of mcfarlane's way of reissuing their old figures and thinking of weird ideas which they think will be cool that they'll sell and yeah, yeah, and I'm thinking if they if this sells out, they will be con they will continue to do this kind of this uh, this kind of gimmick again to their other modes. But for me, guys, I honestly like them. I I, I just like the color scheme. I like how these two would look on my uh, on my display. But as I said, it is an easy pass for a two pack, and. If you're kind of interested with them, maybe you can wait for them to to go on sale. Anyway, guys, uh, if you reached this part of my video, thanks a lot. If you like my video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It will really help my channel. And as usual, guys, enjoy life and keep collecting.